My initial reaction to Budget 2024 is that it is exactly what I expected. Uh, it's been very well flagged over the last number of months by all the ministers and what they are telling us is that um, younger children and younger families are going to do very well in this budget. Everybody else basically gets a 5% increase. It's a budget of one-offs one-off measures particularly in housing and with respect to the refugee crisis and one-offs with respect to just about everything else including student supports. For the general Irish public, most people will see um, a, a, an improvement in their tax take. Um, so they will they will enjoy uh, reductions in USC. PRSI levels will go up very, very slightly to cope with um, uh, retirement and ageing increases. But fundamentally, they'll, they'll, every household will be a little bit better off because um, there will be energy packages, um, three of them throughout the, throughout the year. That'll improve things. Child benefit will increase. Social protection will increase. If you're on a pension, you'll get a little bit more and so forth. The Christmas bonus will be doubled. So overall, it's a high spending budget. Over 12 billion euros is going to be spent, um, but it's going to be spent in little pockets all over uh, the economy. So everyone will feel some kind of benefit, even if it is um, just a mild one. The, this budget brought in several large-scale measures, most importantly a climate resilience fund. Um, that climate resilience fund is going to be funded by up to 4 billion euros a year for every year from now until 2035. That's an extraordinary amount of money um, and the idea is to produce a fund that can help um, people adjust into the future. Now if the economy disimproves into the future then obviously that money won't be put in there um, and it may indeed be rated into the future but the hope and the um, plan is to use these new funds in order to offset the costs of climate change and particularly to pay for infrastructure into the future. That's a very, very good thing. At the, in the short term, what households are going to see are energy credits. So money in the same, in the same kinds, but in a lower amount that was given last year. So 150 euros in uh, several bursts throughout the year to help um, households deal with the cost of uh, um, heating their homes. This budget addresses childcare as the major cost it, and it is the major theme of this budget that it's framed against a lot of uncertainty, particularly with um, the external environment. So the idea is to have lots of pots of money all over the place um, and don't spend, spend it while you have it effectively. In only one respect is it trying to be transformational and that's in addressing the extremely high cost of childcare. It's doing so over a phased series of budgets and um, this budget, um, while it is not quite grasping the nettle of reducing childcare further for families, we won't see any big changes until still September 2024. We will see some changes and it is moving in that direction. So again, every budget is an incremental movement towards a predefined future. So it's really in that vein that the childcare uh, uh, changes are framed. The problem with budgets is that they're designed to be somewhat homeopathic. They're designed to give little bits here, there and everywhere. There was nothing major, there was no major policy that wasn't very clearly foregrounded and very clearly um, uh, uh, prescribed by the ministers. Um, if I was shocked by anything, it was that this is an, this is one of those moments in Irish fiscal history where the state gets to choose the path of its future development. We are not often given these choices where you have ample resources to do what you need to do. Faced with this choice, the ministers have decided to keep going as they are. They haven't made a big, big move. They haven't said, we're going to put 10 billion euros into childcare, or no, we're going to fix higher education, we're going to fix health. They haven't gone for the big move. What they've said is incremental, 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 incremental. That is one vision of the world. And that vision of the world is an incrementalist vision where it says, we'll just keep getting a bit better year on year. The problem with that is we have vast deficits in housing, vast deficits in health, vast deficits in higher education. And you don't solve those things with incremental changes. Um, you solve those things with big, uh, muscular, strident moves into a specific space fundamentally ask the state to change the game. And if there's anything that shocks me is that granted more resources than any government in the history of the state, this government chose not to use those resources. This budget, like every budget, is an exercise in annual incrementalism. We are not seeing 
the broad contours of the state develop really we're not seeing some vast vision overtake us it's not like a minister came out and said we're going to solve tb or we're going to give third level education away or we're going to change um, one set of uh, parameters that the state um, generally places upon people that isn't what is happening what is happening is a fiver here a fiver there a tenor here a tenor there and so forth and these incremental changes they do add up over many many years but they don't fundamentally change the trajectory of the state and we know for a fact that in the future we're going to have an aging population we know the climate change is a massive factor and we know for a fact that migration is going to be a constant feature of our experience as a nation for the next 50 years and this budget didn't really set up set us up to cope with any of that um, at least not in a way where in 10 years time we could look back and go and say wow god that we really got that right we we planned for that we executed that we made that work um, as always with any finance bill or with any any individual decision you're only looking at the incremental change you never look over the broader span of things um, the broader story here is that over a 10-year period the size of the state will have doubled um, in terms of what it spends and how much it spends that is an extraordinary change in everyone's um, in everyone's experience and i think that in the next 10 years we are going to see the results and the experience and the impact of those decisions. The decisions that we live, the conditions that we live with today are really an experience of the decisions that were made 10 years ago. We live, we work in buildings that were decided upon and funded 10 years ago and we work in them today. It's the same thing with government policies. They take a long time to enact, but once they are enacted, they're there for a very, very long time. And I think that's not a bad thing. It's not worth, it's not worth um, worrying too much about. What is absolutely true is that faced with an opportunity to change a specific trajectory, the government chose not to. And that is perhaps something that history may fault them on. I don't know yet. The third level sector really didn't see as many increases as one might have expected. So in a report called Funding the Future, the government agreed that uh, the higher education sector needed about 300, 350 million euros a year extra in core funding. That's funding for, for teachers, for staff, for administration, for buildings. Um, we only got 60. So if you need 350 and you get 60, um, then that's uh, not, not a big increase. However, as I said, this is a one-off uh, budget um, and students will have a reduction in the student contribution that they, are, they and their families have to pay. There'll also be increases in the student grant, there'll be increases in the postgraduate grant given to students for the first time in a long time and uh, there'll be banned changes and uh, changes to the SUSE system. So overall, students will be a little bit better off but in terms of changing the game for higher education, uh, this budget is not the one. Perhaps budget 2025 will be the one we'll need to see. The key takeaways are that the student contribution will fall, in some cases being cut in half. The SUSE grant will rise. We will see a big change in renters tax credits, so it'll be easier for students to get uh, digs and accommodation. And finally, we're going to see an increase in postgraduate grants and uh, fee waivers there too. So that's a ver another very good thing.